So meteor showers are important because they are window on the universe. They show us, you know, streams that are otherwise mostly invisible. And those meteor streams are satellite hazards. They show the presence of, you know, potentially hazardous comets. And uh, they show us the history of, of uh, the past history of uh, the mass loss of comets, the comet evolution and so on. So, um, you know, uh, in, Many of us here, I, I should say, are involved in mapping the skies and, and defining uh, what all those meteor showers are. And we've been working on that for many years. And in 2019, CAMS, a uh, project that I'm leading, got uh, extended to the Southern Hemisphere. And, uh, you know, we're up to 2.7 2 million orbits at the moment. And, uh, you know, that all sort of inspired me to um, think of another book. <laughs> Um, sorry about that. Uh, but in this case, not a book on the dynamics of meteor streams, but a, but basically a birder's guide to meteor showers. So, you know, you know, the birder's guide, you have a nice picture of the bird. You have uh, a little bit of text that talks about the range of the bird, um, you know, what it eats, what uh, how it looks like, uh, what uh, uh, when it was first described, uh, all those things. And so I thought that... Uh, that, that we needed something, a, a desk manual uh, for um, helping us identify what meteor shower is what. And uh, this is it. <laughs> so uh, this, is, this, is as, this is as far as we are now. It's going to be uh, 800, 800 uh, a little over 800 pages. Uh, very, very happy to show you out there. Uh, it's basically uh, two messages that I wanted to, to get out. One is uh, that um, there's still time. <laughs> uh, we are still indexing the book and uh, going through the last round of corrections. So if, uh, for example, Rikina wants to name a meteor shower differently, <laughs> then now is the last opportunity to please let me know and uh, we'll, we'll uh, adjust the name. Um, the other message I wanted to, to uh, go out is, uh, is a thank you. Because uh, I, I um, you know, my ambition is large, so I wanted to uh, not just describe the CAMS data, but I wanted to also include all the other work that is being done on uh, meteor shower modeling, not just uh, referencing all the work that, that you guys have been doing and publishing, uh, but but going to the original data set. So I've also looked at the Sonataco data, the Edmund data, GMN, Global Meteor Network, um, and I also wanted to include the radar data. So if, gotten permission from uh, Diego Janches to look at the SAMA, uh, nice SAMA data set. Um, uh, Gunther Stober here made the Marcy data set available. Uh, Johan Kerel made the new, uh, new radar data set available. And Jorge Chau made the, uh, 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 the Gikamaka radio observatory data set available. So we have basically an overview of uh, meteor showers for wide range of product sizes. And so you can see how the showers are different from one stream to the other. So uh, let me give uh, just an interruption here and a, and a show of hands to the people here and also the people online, show your, your hand symbol, uh, if you took part in the CAMS camera network somehow. And if you took part in the global media network, <laughs> if you took par part in Sonotaco, Sonotaco network, if you took part, of course, in the Video Meteor Network and uh, Edmond database. If you took part and built the SAMA radar data set, <laughs> uh, built and operated the, uh, the, the MASI da uh, data set, <laughs> worked on uh, the MU radar data, helped build that equipment, and uh, also uh, you know, helped and run and built uh, the Meteor of observing facilities at Chickamauga. So uh, all of you, thank you very much. I mean, this is really, uh, I'm th very thankful that this work was accomplished. So that's my thank you. So this is of course, this is of course what we're talking about, uh, the Meteor uh, Data Center list of meteor showers. It's very long, 930 showers. Uh, since I made this list, we're down, down to number 1031 there, uh, it has gone up to 1211. 12, <laughs> um, so it's it's very unwieldy, so it's very difficult to 
uh, understand which meteor showers are which. There's a lot of um, duplicates in the list. There's a lot of uh, the early showers we put in were based on very little data. So there's a lot of uh, confusion there. And uh, and so the plan was basically to, to, to go back to the original data, to collect all that video data, collect all that radar data, and go and look for meteor showers. Which ones can we actually see? Which ones can we actually confirm? And uh, this is uh, uh, just a uh, display what we do these days. So there's just a single day of uh, 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 meteor video meteor shower observations. So, so CAMs and uh, Global Meteor Networks and TACO, this is the sort of uh, plots you get. And so uh, Max already described nicely this working with in the ecliptic plane and keeping the sun you know, on that side of yourself going in that direction, that's the apex. Then you have helium source stuff coming from that direction. I uh, saw helium stuff coming from the sun, of course, anti-helium stuff coming from the other direction, and a bunch of stuff coming from, from the apex. And that's what you can see in this sort of projection. Uh, but this graph, of course, also shows nicely the constellation. So what in what the directions on the sky that corresponds. This is meteor showers. Uh, that SETI.org website, which is a very nice tool to see what meteor showers are active uh, tonight. And uh, this is, you know, uh, what we are up to. There is just a constant barrage of meteor showers. It's not just the Taurids and the Perseids and the Leonids. It's uh, showers all the time. There's a lot of little showers that pop up in the Apex source. And so I, I collected all the data, went through all the data. And then there is the issue with uh, video and radar. So this is just a, a short, uh, period of time in uh, June, uh, late May, June, uh, showing video data around the anti-helium source. And at the same time, you see the radar data. You can see those differences between radar and, and the video data that you have to sort of disentangle. You have to figure out what is a meteor shower and what is not. So uh, all said and done, I was able to find 500 or so 13, 513 meteor showers, of which uh, 36 were originally uh, unique to radar, but I last two weeks I looked again at the video data and I found 10 more. So now there's only 26 meteor showers that are unique to radar. And one of the showers that's unique to radar is the one that Johan presented earlier uh, today, uh, which is actually a transient shower. So it showed up in the uh, mu radar data just in 2014. And so, uh, you know, we have those showers. So the radar data are mostly uh, low inclined. Uh, uh, and uh, short period type showers, so Ju Jupiter family uh, type showers, uh, toroidal showers. A lot of the video de detected showers are long period comet showers, actually almost half. So we have a lot of long period comets that come close to us. <laughs> That's uh, something to, uh, you know, uh, pause, pause for a second and think about. And uh, the book basically presents uh, this sort of maps. Uh, it presents the maps in right ascension declination, so it's sort of an index map, so you know where what is. Uh, it presents uh, the maps in heliocentric coordinates, so you can see how that looks in heliocentric coordinates, uh, especially the anti-helium source shows better if you do that. And uh, of course, it has an index uh, that get, tells you on which shower, on which page is what map. <laughs> and then for each shower, there is a map. So this was... Um, the map for the uh, Tau Hercules before we had the fantastic outburst in, uh, uh, when was it, uh, 2022. Uh, so you basically see the, the, the direction from which the meteors come towards you. Uh, each point is a triangulated meteor uh, by uh, one of the video networks. So this is all video data combined. And, uh, and you can see the uh, another shower 456 there. And so I, so, I, so I label some of the showers, present this type of map, and then each map comes with a, a table that describes the properties of the showers. As I said, you know, the range of the bird, the plumage, the, the properties, and uh, that's listed here. So in this case, uh, the name, what type of shower it is, um, the date and times of outbursts, uh, the period of annual activity, the median orbit, uh, the orbital elements, the dispersion in the orbital elements, and the drift in the orbital elements is function of solar longitude. And it gives the number of meteors where it's based on, the average height of the radiant, and video data, the mass of a magnitude zero meteor. Uh, it ta talks about the magnitude size distribution index. And it talks about um, how high uh, meteors are first detected. 
so the so all the data is uh, is augmented with the results you published in the literature. So there's references to everything <laughs> uh, that uh, uh, I could find. Uh, I could be more exhaustive. I'm sure I missed a lot of your work, and my apologies for that. Uh, but um, but I'm hoping that these descriptions are sort of it's very summarized, as you know, uh, just uh, little notes on uh, what is what. But it gives a history on when the shower was first detected and uh, who gave the name and all that sort of that sort of information. And I added uh, in some cases uh, activity curves. And um, Sekumola had invited me to take the big video meter database and construct very nice light curves out of that. Um, I'd made that step uh, had I not discovered that I could perfectly well do this from the CAMS data. We have so many data now that that also produced very nice uh, light curves. So that uh, saved the hassle with uh, you know emailing back and forth and trying to those things out. But this, this is basically the uh, the results from all the not just CAMS but all the video data that were uh, that were reported. And uh, so I have showers like that. So this is. Um, Going into the, so now you want to describe the bird, you want to describe sort of what, what physical properties it has with, and so on. And uh, one of the things that we know of meteor showers is that they, the meteors on average, if you look at a shower, you say you have 100 meteors observed from that shower, uh, they uh, on average start at a certain altitude. And there's a range. If you plot up all the meteors, it looks like this. And what I did was I uh, sort of um, identified uh, little groups of three kilometer steps going down. Um, and uh, I call those one, two, three, uh, four, some. And, uh, and that basically describes a type of a meteoroid. So this depends on what the physical properties of the meteoroid are. So the, whether the thermal conductivity is high, whether the heat penetrates into the meteoroid, that sort of thing. And if you do, uh, if you take one shower, so take a velocity and you, you have one, one velocity, you take a bunch of meteors, then for one shower, it looks like this. So you actually, for in a given shower, you have meteoroids that start high and meteoroids that start low. And uh, I consider those as two groups. And so basically they are presented in the data as two groups. And then if you make a plot like this, where you plot magnitude versus the beginning height, then you can plot a linear line through it. You can find out what is the beginning height of the zero magnitude meteor. And that number is presented. And also the slopes in these curves are presented. And so, um, and then, of course, uh, you can take the, the, so that's at the bottom line here. That's uh, that's presented there. So two A means that's that type of shower, and then uh, you see the, the 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 linear plots, and then from that you can also derive densities. So you so have density estimates for the meteoroids, physical densities, meteoroid densities, and uh, that's based on our deceleration information. So with CAMS, you measure how the meteoroid is slowing down. Uh, one meter is uh, useless data. <laughs> Ten meters is useless data. But once you have a group of fifty or hundred, then uh, you get average values that you can uh, you can link to the, the meteor density, and you can actually see that difference between Jupiter family comet showers and helitype comet showers that in the past was noticed uh, by Kikwai and others. And so you can see that uh, helitype comets tend to be uh, lower density than the and I was, uh, of course, I have to normalize the scale, and that's uh, another interesting thing. So initially, I, I had I sort of a band of densities. Initially, I put the top limit at iron because iron has the highest density, you know, seven, eight gram per cubic centimeter. But um, there are no iron particles in meteor showers. We we see a lot of spectra with that of completely iron particles, so they do exist, but they are not associated with meteor showers, and so. Um, and so then, um, after discussions with Dennis and with the work being done in Canada, uh, they were talking about uh, detecting meteoroids uh, with Kama system that showed that a lot of the meteoroids have really low densities. And so then I decided to put the upper limit at th uh, three and a half gram per cubic centimeter. That's basically a molten, a molten silicate droplet. And so, uh, so that's the the scale of the densities presented. Yeah, and then there's of course some information on the on the source if I if I know it or if I found a reference to it. And um, last but not least, I spent a few months uh, reducing the CAMS spec spectrograph data, which we've been we've been collecting since 2013. I did about a year and a half, and I got a thousand and five spectra. And that time, I thought it was enough. <laughs> 
And so if you plot all those up uh, for the here's plotted uh, magnesium versus O-line ratio, you can, you can plot the magnesium versus uh, sodium and uh, what is it? Mag uh, iron versus magnesium. You can plot sodium versus magnesium and so on. And then you can plot, uh, you see there's a trend and that trend describes how the material is released from the particles. So that trend basically gives you the gr uh, granditic abundance. If you sit below that trend, then uh, you likely have something that has a low sodium abundance, for example, uh, low magnesium. If you sit above it, then uh, you have a higher one. And so th those numbers are also presented in the book for, for each of the showers. And finally, uh, I felt that uh, one ought to present with a meteor stream how old it is. <laughs> now, it's a very controversial subject because everybody's, you know, is working very hard to get those those ages and come up with decent meter stream models and so on. But a lot of the effort has gone into short period streams, uh, Halley type comet, Jupiter family comet. So there's not much work done on, on uh, long period comets and almost half of my streams are long period. So uh, with the help of Jeremy, who kindly made his uh, software available uh, to us, uh, we developed that into our own so piece of software, uh, two pillars uh, did that work. and. Um, we ended up with uh, modeling uh, some of the meteor streams for which we had dispersions. We basically have showers that are very compact, showers that are very dispersed, and uh, found that, uh, that uh, based on uh, that data and based on what was published in literature, that there is to first order uh, sort of a linear trend to the, 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 the stream uh, broadening and time. And if you have that uh, scale correct, then you can just uh, look at the observed uh, Dispersion, you get an age. It's very naive because you don't doesn't say anything about exactly how you go to the stream, only if you model it. So you see that here is one of the models. But uh, you can derive a, a general relationship for uh, age versus the, the stream widths that are being produced. And that, uh, that I did. And so we modeled maybe 15 or 20 of these, and then we applied it to the other 240. So uh, the book is coming out in October. <laughs> you can already order it at Elsevier. Uh, so yeah, last the last pieces of lead are, are really the heaviest, I can tell you. <laughs> but if you want to add a piece of lead, please do come and uh, come talk to me. Thank you. Thank you very much.